sure. I like to work, too, and most people don't admit either one of those things, but I do. Our lives are filled with both things, sleeping, working, and all kinds of stuff, and it's really important stuff to us. These are our friends, our family, school, maybe a little television thrown in there. You know, just like there's three basic food groups, I think there's three basic groups for life. The math of it seems really simple here, and it equals 24 hours, but it's not really that easy, is it? Work takes more than eight hours. I've got to get ready for my day, I've got to drive to get there, and then the math of it all changes up, and you have to give up time somewhere. We don't like to give up time for the things that are important to us, so it's really the sleep category that decreases. My solution for this is as simple as the nap. Some people call it a power nap. Other people, affectionately, call it the cat nap. <laughs> now, napping works for us two different ways. It helps reduce that sleep deficit, and it's scientifically proven to make us more effective. The other day, one of my friends was asking me, are there nappers and non-nappers? She was asking that because sometimes when she wakes up from her nap, she's groggy. I explained she's probably sleeping too long. A perfect nap is about 10 minutes. 20 minutes is still good and ideal, and 30 minutes is probably the maximum amount of time you want to spend napping. This is one of those situations where less really is more, because longer sleep times do not give us incrementally better results. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> There have been fabulous nappers throughout history. Thomas Edison, Mark Twain, Churchill, and they all talked about how we should be napping. And they followed their own sleep rhythms, and it turns out we have sleep rhythms too. We're what's known as either being a lark or an owl. Prime napping for both groups occurs between one and three in the afternoon. Now, I've seen some fantastic ways to nap out there, but we really don't need very much. An alarm, some reduced light, and some quiet. Oh, and a place. Of course, we need a place to rest, and if you're not in a pro-napping environment today, popular spots are cars and bathrooms. <laughs> now have faith. <laughs> I am certain that as support for napping increases, so will our choices for accommodations, if we really even need them, because there's something called the ostrich pillow, and it's supposed to make it possible for us to power nap anywhere. <laughs> oh, and do you drink coffee? Personally, I love this one. I can drink a cup of coffee before my nap and wake up refreshed, caffeinated, and energized. <laughs> Just last week, health.com had an article that talked about how our brain is very active as we're napping. It turns out the creative side of our brains are active, and I was thinking, just like when I take out the trash when I'm cleaning house, I can clean my mind of all that junk so I can be more effective during those last few hours of the day. It turns out a third of employers support napping already. That means that two-thirds of employers today just need a little bit of information. Clearly, they haven't gotten all the information. I think they draw a line from sleep to sloth. Do you really think that sloth is a deadly sin? I don't but I do believe that employers don't understand yet about why sleeping is important for us during the day, and we haven't explained to them about how the business is going to benefit. So let's redraw that image to show how short amounts of rest are restorative. It's all about plugging in and recharging. Why, just having naps and having a regular napping routine, it turns out you become more effective as you anticipate your naps. So tonight, I think, we're creating a tipping point. We can do this tonight, right here, right now. Talk to your boss about how they'll have a re-energized staff. And if you're the boss, know that we're not going to be sleeping at the end of the day in our bunny slippers. We know that people aren't getting enough rest, and now we know that there's a solution for it that has some popular support. Remember, people are out there napping already, and they have really low expectations about where they get to do it. At the very least, let's get people out of their cars. Come see me afterward. I have websites to show you. We can talk about napping, and we can talk about creating all sorts of napping-friendly workplaces. Woo!